Right now, it's New York's number one news with Joe Torres and Tanya Rivero, Ryan Field with sports, and meteorologist Jeff Smith with the exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Now, Eyewitness News at 11. Multiple chances for rain this holiday week as millions across the tri-state area head to their Thanksgiving destinations. Meteorologist Jeff Smith has the forecast. Plus, tomorrow, New York City Sanitation Commissioner Jessica Tisch is sworn in as the new police commissioner. What are New Yorkers looking for in their new NYPD leader? We begin tonight with a burglary in Upper Manhattan and a tragic turn of events that ended with a 73-year-old man's death. Hello, I'm Joe Torres. And I'm Tanya Rivera. Vero. Police say three men broke into the apartment early Saturday morning near Broadway and West 161st Street in Washington Heights. They left with a gold chain and cash. One of the burglars entered through a window and amid the chaos, Jacinto Remigio fell out of that window and died. Now, just days before Thanksgiving, a family is in mourning. Eyewitness News reporter Lucy Yang has the story. Joe and Tanya, how did a home invasion end with a 73-year-old man falling to his death? There are many questions surrounding this fatality, including the moments before he went out the window. 73-year-old Jacinto Remigio is gone after falling from his sixth floor apartment window. It's terrible. And I feel my condolences to like him and his entire family. It's awful. It happened 4.40 Saturday morning here on the corner of West 161st Street and Broadway in Washington Heights. According to police, a man entered Remigio's apartment through a window, unlocked the front door, and let in two more criminals. Together, we're told they tied up a 40-year-old man living here, nabbed his $8,000 gold chain and 200 in cash before fleeing. It's extremely heartbreaking and very, very scary. Worse than the material loss, authorities say the man's elderly father, who was home at the same time, fell out the window to his death. There are cameras in the building. Detectives now investigating. Neighbors point out broken glass on the front door as a sign of violence ever lurking. It's extremely terrifying it's for me and my roommates. It's, yeah. It's really scary. As for how the criminal got up to the sixth floor window, I'm told he shimmied up this scaffolding, went around the building, then climbed up the fire escape to the top floor. Relatives of the 73-year-old victim tell me they will have a statement on Monday. In Washington Heights, Lucy Yang, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Lucy, thank you. Breaking news out of Bed-Stuy, Brooklyn, where two people were shot tonight. One of the victims died. It happened around 930 on Albany Street. Police say one man was shot multiple times. He died. A 19-year-old was shot in the back and survived. No word on what led to the shooting and no arrests have been made. A police search tonight for the gunman behind a deadly double shooting that started in the Bronx and ended in Manhattan. Police say someone fired at a car this morning on the Cross Bronx Expressway, three people were inside the vehicle. The 27-year-old driver was not hurt, but drove to New York Presbyterian Hospital in Washington Heights. Inside the car, 21-year-old Ivan de Jesus Bueno was shot in the head. He was rushed to Harlem Hospital where doctors pronounced him dead. A bullet also struck a 21-year-old woman in the shoulder. New information about the teenager arrested in Friday's police-involved shooting in the Bronx. He's 19-year-old Chase Lackard from Soundview, and investigators say he is a suspected gang member. Lackard faces charges of illegal weapons possession and menacing a police officer. Detectives are still looking for a second suspect. Police say the 19-year-old was shot in the leg after he pointed a gun at officers. Tomorrow, New York City Sanitation Commissioner Jessica Tisch will officially become the city's police commissioner. Tisch has held several positions in city government over the years, including positions within the NYPD, but she has no traditional law enforcement experience. So what does Tisch hope to bring to the department, and what do New Yorkers want from their new NYPD leader? I would Business News reporter Sonia Rincon has the story. When the NYPD began routinely using body cameras about seven years ago, Jessica Tisch helped integrate that technology. What we've 
done in New York City is something that's different. Here she is in 2017 as Deputy Commissioner of Information Technology. She was uh, already in the department when I took over 2014. Former Commissioner Bill Bratton was happy to promote her then and even happier to see the current mayor appoint her to lead the department now. I need someone that's going to take the police department into the next century. In his announcement Wednesday, Adams called her a visionary, praising her leadership of the sanitation department the last three years. She'll be the fourth police commissioner to serve under Adams. Keyshawn Sewell left in 2022, reportedly frustrated that the mayor wasn't letting her call the shots. Eddie Caban resigned this year. He's under federal investigation. And Tom Donlin was named on an interim basis. Former Commissioner Bratton says not one of them was as prepared for the top job as Tish is now. If the mayor allows Jesse to effectively uh, drive the bus, get the right people on the bus, get the wrong people off the bus, get the right people in the right seat, he'll get what he's looking for. And that's confidence from the public and the department. It is now my privilege to lead you and I'm looking forward to coming home. At that announcement, Commissioner Tisch addressed New Yorkers directly, saying safety is critical, but so is their feeling of safety. New Yorkers we're hearing from tonight are very eager to see how the department will accomplish that under her leadership. I wish it was something that one person can do. Pam from Brooklyn says it's tough for a police department to strike the right balance in the face of societal issues. And they have to make you know tougher decisions and be a little bit more forceful and then that's not okay. New York is New York because we could walk on the street and feel safe and be okay wherever we were going at whatever time and it doesn't feel the same anymore. But when you see more cops in the street, you do feel safe. A former commissioner's advice for the department going forward? Set the vision, bring on people who share the vision, who can help to implement it, and then get the hell out of the way. In Lower Manhattan, Sonia Rincon, Channel 7, Eyewitness News. And a live look outside of LaGuardia Airport as Americans from coast to coast get a head start on the holiday travel rush. AAA projects nearly 80 million Americans will drive 50 miles or more between Tuesday and the Monday after Thanksgiving. During the same time period, the TSA anticipates it will screen more than 18 million passengers at U.S. airports. We caught up with travelers outside of LaGuardia, people who arrived to New York City today ahead of Thanksgiving. We're going to see the Rockettes, we're going to do a couple food tours, and then we're going to go around Central Park on a bike cab doing the 9-11 memorial, and then the parade mainly is the big thing on Thursday. The Port Authority recommends travelers arrive at the airport two hours early for domestic flights and three hours early for international flights. Now for a check of that all-important forecast for this holiday week, let's send it over to meteorologist Jeff Smith. Jeff. And the national weather map a little bit busy, and you know that storms that are on the West Coast now eventually make their way to the East Coast, and we're watching a couple. We have one over the Midwest. That'll give us some rainfall Tuesday morning. This one just entering the West Coast, Washington, Oregon, California. That'll be knocking on our door Thanksgiving morning with some rainfall by then maybe some mixed precipitation a wintry mix well north and west of New York City if it's cold enough. So right now we're still dealing with the backside of the storm that gave us so much rain this past week and in terms of dealing with that it's the wind which was gusting up at above 40 miles per hour during the day today still gusting up and above 20 in a couple of spots but gradually that wind will really be diminishing overnight tonight. 46 right now in the park you're talking about numbers in the 30s in the normally colder spots north and West, so much less windy tomorrow. It'll feel a whole lot better. Sun and some afternoon clouds. Temperatures well up into the 50s. A little bit of rain developing by daybreak Tuesday, continuing through about midday Tuesday before we break out to a little bit of sun in the afternoon, becoming breezy out there. We're cooler and we're quiet on that really busy travel day, that getaway day on Wednesday before the rain returns. Unfortunately, not great timing there on Thanksgiving, affecting the parade and perhaps a wintry mix north and west of I-287 in the higher elevations. Tonight, getting down down to about 41 midtown 30s north and west 54 for a high tomorrow again a lot less wind tomorrow sticking out like a couple of sore thumbs those rain chances Tuesday and again on Thanksgiving and then the big story becomes some true winter chill a week from today we're going to be struggling to get out of the 30s and your AccuWeather seven day forecast we'll have that coming up back over to you all right Jeff thank you Senator Kirsten Gillibrand wants emergency federal funding to address the wildfire threat in our area she says funds are needed to properly train and outfit members of the FDNY
They know how it spreads through a building. They know how it spreads through an electric grid. They know how it can spread in a city. But learning how to deal with a wildfire, how to stop it, where to dump water, how to stop it from expanding is a, a totally different training. In recent weeks, the FDNY responded to a historic number of wildfires due to bone dry conditions. As the temperatures start to come down, so must the dining sheds. Friday is the deadline for restaurant owners to remove the sheds or face fines. The seating areas have peppered the streets since phase two of the pandemic reopening in June of 2020. Our Kimberly Richardson spoke to one restaurant owner today about the end of the era. How did the shed work for you guys? It's been unbelievable, you know, and it's continued to be great. It's been hard to find people to take them down because everyone's taken them down. The city will allow new sheds in April, but under a permit system that has added provisions. Well, another challenger has entered the 2025 race for New York City mayor. The latest is Michael Blake. He's a former New York State Assembly member from the Bronx. He's also a former vice chair of the Democratic National Committee and worked in the Obama administration for two years. Blake says his campaign will focus on the high cost of living in New York City and quality of life issues. Blake is the seventh prominent candidate to challenge Mayor Adams. Others include New York City Comptroller, Brad Lander, former city comptroller Scott Stringer, state senator Zelnor Myrie, assembly member Jessica Ramos, assembly member Zoran Mamdani, and former federal prosecutor Jim Walden. A Thanksgiving feast tonight that focused on more than just the food. The guests were people who might not otherwise have a way to experience the togetherness of the holiday. Many are homeless. Others are victims of domestic violence, and some live in senior housing. Temple Emmanuel on the Upper East Side organizes this dinner every year. Tonight, there were 225 guests. I think whenever we can offer a helping hand to other people, it's not just the help that we offer them, but we feel changed because of it. An army of about 100 volunteers put the dinner together. President-elect Donald Trump's administration continues to shape up. Coming up, a look at his latest cabinet picks and their paths to Senate confirmation. Plus, Mayor Eric Adams' message to a grieving Jewish community after a rabbi with ties to New York City is murdered overseas. Well, it's been less than three weeks since the election and President-elect Donald Trump has nearly finished making his picks for the top jobs in his next administration. Among his latest picks, billionaire Scott Besant as Treasury Secretary, Russell Vought as Director of the Office of Management and Budget, and Oregon Congresswoman Lori chavez Ramer as Labor Secretary. But not using FBI background checks could make it tough getting some of those picks through the Senate. Here's ABC's Christian. And Cordero. President-elect Donald Trump has moved quickly to fill positions in his cabinet. His latest pick, Brooke Rollins, to lead the Department of Agriculture. Rollins served as his domestic policy advisor during his first administration. Over the weekend, Trump encouraging Florida State Senator Randy Fine to launch a bid to replace Representative Mike Waltz, who has been tapped to be Trump's national security advisor. Waltz made clear on Fox News Sunday he has met with Biden's national security advisor, Jake Sullivan, to discuss U.S. policy and options in Ukraine. For our average series out there that think this is a, a time of opportunity, that they can play one administration off the other, uh, they're wrong. Uh, and, uh, and we are we are hand in glove. We are we are one team uh, with the United States in this transition. Some of Donald Trump's picks have been met with controversy. His nominee for Attorney General Matt Gates dropping out after not having enough support from Republican senators to win confirmation. And now another pick facing scrutiny, Trump's choice for Defense Secretary Pete Hegseth, who was selected with almost no vetting. Democratic Minnesota Senator Amy Klobuchar emphasized the importance of FBI background checks for cabinet nominees. I want to have the hearings. I want to make a decision on each one of them on the merits as I've done in the past. And I can't do that without the background checks. Why wouldn't we get these background checks for the most important job in the United States government? Trump's transition team has not signed the necessary agreements to allow for such screenings. Republican Senator Bill Haggerty said the Trump team has thoroughly vetted all of its candidates and that he isn't concerned with who does
does a formal background check before the confirmation process begins. I don't think the American public cares who does the background checks. What the American public cares about is to see the mandate that they voted in delivered upon. Christiane Cordero, ABC News, Washington. Authorities arrested three people for murdering a rabbi in the United Arab Emirates. Zvi Kogan vanished on Thursday. There are few details on his killing, but Israel says it was an anti-Semitic act. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said the killers will be brought to justice. New York City Mayor Eric Adams posted about the murder of Rabbi Kogan on social media. He said in part, our hearts and prayers are with his wife, a native New Yorker, his entire family and the Jewish community who is grieving right now. This is yet another jarring reminder of how it is dangerous to simply be Jewish in many parts of the world. New York City will never be one of those places. Coming up on Eyewitness News, the key court appearance for the Menendez brothers tomorrow in their bid for freedom. Also ahead, the death of former TV show host Chuck Woolery. A look back at his television career. And we are monitoring some storms as we prepare for Thanksgiving. Meteorologist Jeff Smith returns with another check of the exclusive AccuWeather forecast. Not only did some special children get a ride with Santa today, they also got the shopping spree of a lifetime. Arriving on a vintage fire truck to FAO Schwartz at Rockefeller Plaza, the families of fallen FDNY members were then treated to the 43rd annual Widows and Children's Fund spree, courtesy of the Firefighters Union. This was especially important for the children of the 343 firefighters who died on 9 11. Oh, what a great event. When you yes, those, those smiling there. faces right. say it all on the kids. For That's sure. Great. Very nice. All right, so Jeff, I know we're getting inching closer to Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Do you have a better idea of what Thanksgiving Day is going to look like? Uh, more confident that we are going to get some rainfall, oh. unfortunately, as the more model yeah. information comes in. But right now, we have mainly clear skies out there, and we check out that shot of the Empire State Building lit up in blue tonight for Columbia football's Ivy League win over, and I don't know how Lee Goldberg and I feel about this, <laughs> over Cornell's Big Red. Yeah. Ouch. Up with that. <laughs> Clear skies out there right now. That temperature 46 degrees. The wind has been calming down and it will be a lot lighter tomorrow than what we've been dealing with the past couple of days. So tomorrow, even though temperature is fairly similar, a lower to middle 50s, it'll feel a whole lot better with less wind out there. 53 after a morning low of 44. That 53, a couple degrees above average for this time of the year. Sun going down at 431. By the way, monthly rainfall. Yeah, we're still almost a half inch below average for November uh, by this point. We're up to 2.3 inches, much of that, of course, occurring this past Thursday and Friday. We may end the month at or above average, considering we have some rain coming up Tuesday morning, and then that other more significant bout of rain coming up on Thanksgiving itself. 46 at Newark, 48 at LaGuardia right now, 37 at Sussex, you're 40 at Poughkeepsie, 46 on the island at Islip. So mainly clear skies overnight. You wake up to sunshine tomorrow. Temperatures around 41 in Midtown, closer to the freezing mark north and west. Maybe some high clouds trying to streak into areas west of New York City later on tomorrow. Temperatures getting well up into the 50s. If anything, maybe a degree or two warmer than today. The clouds will be lowering and thickening tomorrow night. So by midnight tomorrow night, Maybe there's a shower showing up well north and west of New York City. I still think much of the area is dry, but there will be showers showing up across the rest of the area by daybreak on Tuesday and right smack dab during the Tuesday morning rush hour. There can be some local downpours moving on through with this line of showers. It's out of here. It's pretty much east of the area by midday, maybe eastern Long Island still being impacted by that. But by Tuesday afternoon, it becomes breezy and that breeze will usher in a drier air mass. Sunshine returns temperatures getting well up into the upper 50s. And then we fast forward to that big travel day on Wednesday. And right now, daylight hours of Wednesday, even into the evening, looking just fine. Just some high clouds increasing ahead of our weather maker for Thanksgiving, which promises to give us some rainfall and maybe a wintry mix in the higher elevations north and west of I-287. For tonight, in the meantime, down to about 41, clear to partly cloudy skies out there. Look at that wind diminishing down to about 5 to 10 miles per hour compared to what it's been gusting up to 40, 45 miles per hour the past couple of days. So it'll feel a whole lot better tomorrow. That high getting up to about 54, much less wind out there. Sunshine and some afternoon clouds. Cloudy with a little bit of rain very late tomorrow night. 
toward daybreak on Tuesday, that low dipping down to about 47. Tuesday, the first half of the day is pretty damp out there. There'll be periods of rain, and then we get some periods of sun in the afternoon, becoming breezy, that high spiking up to about 56. Cooler Wednesday, about 47 for that big travel day. Maybe some high clouds increasing late in the afternoon ahead of our Thursday weather maker. Thanksgiving, rain at times, perhaps a wintry mix north and west of I-287 in the higher elevations, 48 for a high in the city. It'll be just a liquid event here. Partly sunny and breezy, Black Friday shoppers, 47 degrees by then. And then Saturday, check this out, only 40 for a high if you mm. think that's cold. Mm. Meteorological winter begins on Sunday, December 1st, a week from today, and it will feel the part. Oh. 37 <laughs> for a high, dipping down into the upper 20s at night, feeling even colder oh. with the wind. And that's all despite sunshine, which will be deceptive and ineffective. Mm. Call it. Jeff, we love you. We don't love your yeah, forecast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to well said, Jeff. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, Ryan's got a wintry mix of sports. I was going to say, you might not like my sports guy. <laughs> All I is right that. with the world. I mean, city. between Columbia and NYU, the yeah. city's sports teams are on fire. A lot, a lot of pride to be had, right? Yeah, that's Gotta right. All right. Oh, thank thanks you, so much. And preparations are well underway for the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Coming up, how the NYPD is making sure safety is the top priority for the nation's largest Thanksgiving Day celebration. And we introduce you to the two luckiest turkeys in America. They will receive a presidential pardon that promises to keep them off your Thanksgiving dinner plate. As we draw closer to the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, law enforcement officials, as they always are, they're on high alert. That's right, and while there are no specific threats to this year's parade, the NYPD isn't taking any chances. Here's ABC's Ike Jachi. The NYPD is on high alert tonight as they're preparing for the nation's largest Thanksgiving celebration, the 98th annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. And it's expected to draw around 2 million spectators. And according to a joint threat assessment obtained by ABC News, federal law enforcement agencies consider the parade an attractive target for both foreign and domestic terrorists. Now, it's important to note, the assessment says there is no specific or actionable threat to this year's event. But law enforcement raises particular concern about lone offenders and small groups targeting the crowd. The NYPD has been especially busy in recent days, chasing down suspects in multiple stabbings and slashings. The random attacks are putting people in the city and visitors on edge as we head into the holiday weekend. And that was ABC's Ike Ajachi reporting. New tonight, the family of a Queens hit and run victim is coming forward to call on the driver to surrender. They are identifying the victim as 47-year-old Lucia Grant. Police say she was crossing North Conduit Avenue yesterday morning when she was struck near Kennedy Airport. The driver kept going. Grant's family tells us she was living temporarily in Queens because her Bronx apartment was damaged by a fire. Now they are trying to raise money for her funeral. Tomorrow, the Menendez brothers could move one step closer to freedom. Kyle and Eric will ask a judge to reconsider their convictions. A judge sentenced them to life in prison without parole for the notorious 1989 murders of their parents. But the brothers insist new evidence has come forward supporting their claim they were abused. They could be resentenced to a lesser charge. Happening tomorrow, a court hearing to determine whether The Onion can still buy InfoWars. The satirical newspaper had seemed to seal the deal for the conspiracy site owned by Alex Jones. But now another bidder who's aligned with Jones objects to the agreement. Jones had to unload InfoWars as part of the $1.5 billion he's supposed to pay families of Sandy Hook school shooting victims. Jones spread lies about the massacre, calling it a hoax, and the families, the victims' families, he called them actors. Tomorrow, two lucky turkeys will get an official Thanksgiving pardon from President Biden. The four-month-old birds will be the centerpiece of a White House ceremony that dates back 77 years. It spares them from ever becoming a holiday meal. The special turkeys were introduced today in Washington, and the son of the farmer who raised them revealed their names. And I'd like you to meet Pe Peach and Blossom. <laughs> Peach and Blossom, there you have it. After their pardon, the birds will fly back home to Minnesota, and as tradition dictates, they will strut out the rest of their lives at a wild 
Life Center. Peach and Blossom, two lucky birds. They have much to be thankful <laughs> That's for, don't right. they? Yes. Indeed. They're, they're next. <laughs> a special delivery on the side of the Garden State Parkway. Meet the baby who entered the world a little earlier than expected and the first responders who helped deliver her. Uh, and we have some special holiday programming to tell you about. On Thanksgiving Day at 1030, Shirlene Alicott will host a 30-minute neighborhood eat special. It looks at some of the best, unique restaurants in our area. At 1230, Nina Pineda has the seven on your side holiday shopping guide with ways to save time and money during the busiest shopping days of the year. And then on Friday at 1030, Joel Gargiulo brings us storefront stories, highlighting some special local businesses ahead of Small Business Saturday. Now, let's meet the host of Wheel of Fortune, Chuck Woolery. Fortune. Fans are remembering game show host Chuck Woolery tonight. Woolery was the original host of Wheel of Fortune. He was also known for hosting Love Connection and Scrabble. His podcast co-host confirmed he died at his Texas home earlier this morning. Woolery was inducted into the American TV Game Show Hall of Fame in 2007 and was nominated for a Daytime Emmy in 1978. He was 83 years old. First responders jumped into action last week when an expecting mother suddenly went into labor on the Garden State Parkway and, in South Jersey. And now mom will have quite the story to tell loved ones this holiday season. Shari Williams from our sister station, WPVI, has the story. This is Amelia. <laughs> Amelia Charlotte entered the world November 21st at 9.18 p.m., weighing 8 pounds and 7 ounces. Her entrance was very unique and not according to plan. I was terrified, <laughs> a little scared. Didn't want to be in that situation for sure. <laughs> but um, I'm glad that she's, you know, happy and um, healthy and that she came out amazing and she's doing amazing. Parents Joanna Ellswick and James Marsden were making the 50-minute trip from Cape May to Atlantic Care Hospital in Galloway Township when Ellswick went into labor. They immediately pulled over to the side of the Garden State Parkway and called 911. And we had to wait for the state trooper to get there. And by the time he got there, I was already pushing. Upper Township first responders came to the rescue. And so did Deputy Chief Brian Allegretto with the Seaville Volunteer Fire Company. I checked her out. I didn't see, uh, there was no crowning, there was no head visible at that point. I thought we were going to have a little more time. But baby Amelia decided otherwise, and Allegretto says she arrived in seconds. A miraculous moment where both the parents and the first responders are full of gratitude. Very nice. Mm. That was Shari Williams reporting. And now they are a family of four, and they say they are happy little Amelia arrived in time for Thanksgiving. Isn't that sweet? Very nice. <laughs> Coming up on Eyewitness News, will the weather impact your holiday travel plans? Meteorologist Jeff Smith tracks some storms, and that includes rain on Thanksgiving Day. Stay yeah. with us. A competition today that will help feed people this Thanksgiving. The New York Roadrunners held its annual Race to Deliver Four Mile Run. It's held in conjunction with God's Love We Deliver, a group dedicated to delivering medically tailored meals to people with severe illnesses. They are going into their busiest week of the year, Thanksgiving week, where they deliver full Thanksgiving meals to thousands and thousands of New Yorkers. So New York Roadrunners and God's Love We Deliver are really two New York City institutions. That they are. This year, God's Love We Deliver will distribute more than 5 million meals to New Yorkers. And there was food and a whole lot more today at a pre-Thanksgiving day of service in Midtown. The Met Council on Jewish Poverty prepared boxes for the holiday and beyond. The items included cold weather gear to help people make it through the winter. But getting food to those in need remains the top priority.
is a time for us to remind everyone that lack of food and hunger is a real issue 365 days a year. Poverty is on the rise. You go to any food pantry today, the line is four or five blocks. Today's volunteers assembled 500 warming kits and 200 Thanksgiving relief boxes. What a great effort. That's that is. great. And those warming kits, Jeff, are going to come in handy. Uh, yeah. And then we're going to need yeah. them on Sunday. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. But a week from today, struggling to get uh, out of the 30s. It'll be our first time below freezing mm. in New York City, probably Friday night mm. at the earliest. And then between now and then, we have a couple of rain systems to deal with. One on Tuesday morning, and another one happens to be right smack dab on Thanksgiving. We head outside right now. Clear skies out there. We actually had a sprinkle move across the city earlier this evening. That has moved by the wayside. We're clearing things out. The wind is calming down. More importantly, a west wind only coming in about six miles per hour right now after gusting in many areas past 40 miles per hour during the day today. 45 is your number. 53 was our high. Two degrees above average. 73 the record. That would have felt nice, right? That was back in 1979. Got all the way down to 14 on this date back in 1880. Sun goes down at 4 31 these days coming up 655 in the morning uh, 45 at Newark 43 your number at Teterboro right now 39 Newburgh you're 37 in the northwest hills of New Jersey at Sussex you probably still have some snow on the ground in a place like High Point that got 20 inches of snow Thursday into Friday 43 at Belmar 35 down the shore at Tom's River actually one of your colder spots so overnight tonight we drop down to about 41 in the city mainly clear skies out there 30s in the normally cooler spots north and west Mostly sunny tomorrow, at least to start. Maybe some high clouds starting to filter in later in the day. Those numbers getting up into the 50s. Tomorrow is going to feel a whole lot better than today due to the lack of wind. Clouds really lower and thicken as we head into tomorrow night. By midnight tomorrow night, maybe one or two spots is getting a sprinkle or a shower well north and west, but I think tomorrow evening is mainly dry. But showers do show up across much of the rest of the area toward daybreak on Tuesday, and this line of showers, because batch of showers can continue right through about 9 or 10 o'clock in the morning. By midday, it's probably just relegated to eastern Long Island, and then we start getting some sunshine returning here in the city. Temperatures getting well back up into the 50s. So Tuesday's rain event, not that significant, maybe a tenth or two of an inch of rain. By Wednesday, big travel day, of course. And right now, it's looking pretty quiet. Just some high clouds increasing. It'll be a cooler day, stuck in the 40s. Here comes our rainfall, though, for Thanksgiving. That's pointing in our direction. And it may be just cold enough in the higher elevations north and west of New York City on Thanksgiving for there to be a little bit of a wintry mix. Doesn't look too significant in terms of any accumulation at this point, though. Clear to partly cloudy skies overnight. We're down to about 41. One, look at the wind, only 5 to 10 miles per hour uh, during the day tomorrow. So we'll call it much less windy out there. Sunshine and some afternoon cloud cover. Uh, that high getting up to about 54. Cloudy with a little bit of rain toward daybreak Tuesday. That low tomorrow night dipping down to about 47. Here's your Iraqi weather seven day forecast. Rain for the first half of Tuesday, maybe through late morning through about midday. Breezy, some breaks of sun in the afternoon. That high getting up to about 56. Turning cooler on Wednesday, 47. So some high clouds increasing late. Those clouds lower and thicken Wednesday night. You get some rain probably getting in here right around daybreak on Thursday, and it's rain at times all day on Thanksgiving. A good day to stay inside, enjoy some good food. Maybe a wintry mix north and west of I-287, about 48 in Midtown. So in the city, it's just a liquid event. Partly sunny and breezy on Friday, upper 40s. You can forget about upper 40s, though, by the weekend. Only 40, barely for a high on Saturday. The breeze making it feel even colder, and there you go. By by next Sunday, a week from today, the beginning of meteorological winter, December oh. the 1st, it'll feel the part. Oh. 37 <laughs> by day, 29 by night. Oh. Oh, I'm we'll, getting cold just hearing we'll about it. We'll still be di digesting food. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully that'll keep us warm. A trip to fan from the turkey. That's right. to sleep <laughs> Jeff, thank That's you so much. That's the news for everyone. I'm Joe Torres. And I'm Tanya Rivero. Eyewitness News returns tomorrow morning at 4.30. Have a great night.